Thank you for tuning in to Upon the Rock broadcast. I'm your host, Pastor Lawrence Shakira. I believe the Word of God will build a godly foundation in the lives of people. There is more available information on our website. You can log on to ShakiraMinistries.org. Now, let's go on to today's message. These male witches and nobody else is going to come in. It's still giving attention to the demonic forces. Okay? And so, they would leave the, the jack and letter there almost like as a sign of saying, you are now covered by us. Now, look how ironic that is. You are covered by us, but we can take what we need from you. Uh, especially when it comes to October and, and, and um, you know, all of these types of sacrifices. People may think they, that it's a joke and they laugh at it, but these things are actually going on. And you'd be surprised at what kind of people that may be living in your neighborhood. That's why you have to pray for your neighborhoods, pray for your children, pray for your kids and your grandchildren, because these kinds of things are still going on today. Okay, Satan still has his priests. He still has his Satan, satanic church. And more and more people are becoming more and more interested in the occult every single day. That's why we have to choose this day who we're going to serve. Are we going to serve God or are we going to serve the world? Okay, so let's keep going here. You see, witchcraft and occult practices are, are increasing with, with teenagers every single day. I mean, you can look at the movies. You can look at the the uh, Twilight series, you can look at all of these things that kind of paint the occult as a good thing. Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. He disguises himself to make it look like he's really good and that there's nothing wrong with him. And most importantly, he tried to make it seem like that he doesn't exist at all. And so people are just kind of just blindly walking into these things and not knowing that this is something that's from the demonic kingdom. Okay. So we have to be wise. We have to talk to our teenagers. We have to talk to our children. See, my children, uh, they know about this subject. What I'm teaching you all today is what I've been teaching my boys since they were, I mean, real, real small before they can even start to learn how to walk. So we as parents and mentors and, and people of influence have an obligation to teach the next generation because they don't know. If you don't teach them, the world will. And so it has to come from you on, on why we don't do these certain things. Even though in today's society, Hawaii is going to be Hawaii, but uh, Halloween is considered fun and games, the very foundation of it is rooted in witchcraft. The, the very foundation of the fundamental portion of Halloween is rooted in witchcraft, which God says do not do. God says don't do this. Whenever God says don't do this, there's a reason why he says don't do it. Okay, and so Halloween games or gazing into the mirror to see the future husband. They would have all of these uh, particular games that that is basically, like I said again, just is rooted in demonic forces. And so people are trying to get their future, and they're looking at these mirrors, and they're going into these dark rooms and saying Bloody Mary, and they're doing all these kind of things just to kind of see if anything would happen. But that is opening the door to all these demonic activities that we we got to be careful not to do. All right. And so, what happens when it comes to Halloween and Christianity? I mean, uh, you know, I get, I get questions from uh, some parents that say, you know, what are my views on Halloween? And I know that sometimes they're, they're asking because, number one, they have small children. I mean, I have small children too at the time of this video. Uh, but I educate my children on why me and, you know, their mom, my wife, does not approve of Halloween, okay? And before a child, they see, they, they probably don't see all of the uh, occultic things like I just described to you and showed you in Scripture. They see it as a day of candy and a day of playing make-believe. This is their day to be a superhero. This is their day to to do, you know, what they wanted to do for so long, okay? Uh, so I, the Bible is silent when it says the word Halloween, but it does say about the occultic things. But what about when it comes to candy and costumes? Let me just kind of just show you a little bit of what the Bible says when it came to certain practices back in, 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 in Paul's day 
that, you know, were looked down upon the body of Christ, but the world was like, okay, there's nothing wrong with this. And he had to find a balance in his way. Let's look at the book of Romans chapter 14. This is going to be in a message translation. It says, welcome with open arms, fellow believers who do not see things the way you do. And don't jump all over them every time they do or say something that you don't agree with even when it seems that they are so strong in their opinions, but weak in the faith department. Now notice how he says now, and these people, they, they have real strong opinions and they feel like this is nothing wrong with this, but they don't have real good faith or they don't have the faith when it came to, um, you know, basically speaking like this, they, they were very, they can be very, very religious. They can be very, very, uh, you know, straightforward, or conservative, which is which is all good, but they're not as open to other things. And you know, there are some Christians that are like that. Uh, every Christian that is open-minded is not demon-possessed, and every Christian that is conservative is not super religious. What he's trying to say here is, don't jump over all these people because you got to learn how to find the balance. And here's what he says right here. Remember. They have their own history to deal with. Treat them gently. Verse uh, 4, he says, For instance, a person who has been around for a while may be able to convince that he can eat anything on the table. Of course, at this time, there was a lot of idol sacrifices going on, and some of the meat was offered to, to uh, idols and these false gods. Well, Paul says, you know what? I, I would eat the meat all the time. But um, I realized that most Christians who are weak in faith or who have not came to that level yet still say, oh, no, I can't eat that because that's been sacrificed to idols. Well, Paul was saying, well, I thank God for it, and, and I cover it with, 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 the, with, with the grace, and um, I'm going to enjoy it. But he also realized that everybody does not see it that way. So he made a decision to kind of just not do certain things for their sake. But for him, it was, it was fine. And for his house, he was... He was okay with it because he knew the balance or he knew the truth or he knew what was what was uh, uh, between the relationship between him and his God. So watch this. He says, for instance, a person who has been around for a while may be able to be convinced that he can eat anything on the table, while another with a different background may assume, might assume he could only be a vegetarian and eat accordingly. Okay, so one person eats meat, the other one doesn't because he just feels like, you know, what that stuff is sacrificed to idols, I can't do that. But that's not the case with another person. Okay, here's my point. Look at him. He says, but since both are guests at Christ's table, are you a guest at Christ's table? Are you a Christian? Are you a, a child of God? Since both of you are a child of God, even though you have two different views, both of you all are Christians. You accepted him as your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Watch this. But since both are guests at Christ's table, wouldn't it be terribly rude if they failed to criticize what the other ate or didn't eat? God, after all, invited them both to the table. Do you have any business cross, crossing people off the guest list or interfering with God's welcome? No. What kind of authority do you have to look down your nose and tell them, oh, you shouldn't be doing it, you shouldn't be doing it. If their faith says that is wrong for me to do that, then you close your mouth. If God had not given that to you when it comes to certain things, I mean, think about it. If the Bible doesn't say no to this, and it doesn't say yes to this, and you have this quote-unquote gray area, that's when you use the conviction of the Holy Spirit. The Bible talks about him who knows to do good but does it not to him, it's sin. If it's wrong to you and you know it's wrong to you, then don't do it then because it is sin. Okay? So look at this. Uh, he says, um, do you have any business crossing off people at the, uh, at the list of fear with God's welcome? If there are corrections to be made or manners to be learned, God can handle that without your help. I love the message translation, how it says it, how it puts it so practical in that way. He says, God can, in other words, God doesn't need any help being God. He is God all by himself, and he doesn't need our views or our opinions to help him be God because he's God already. Look at this. Um, forget about deciding what's right for each other. Here's what you need to be concerned about. That you don't get in the way of someone else making life more difficult than it already is. I'm convinced 
Jesus convinced me, he says, that everything as in itself is holy. We, of course, by the way, we, tr we treat it, or by the way we treat it or talk about it, can contaminate it. What we do with it, how we, how we use it, can be the cause of it being contaminated. When God placed something here for us to enjoy, that, that, that's fine. We find the balance. You know, you have to be able to, you got to be able to teach your children this. You got to be able to explain to them what, what God is saying. And, you know, like I said before, if it's not in the, in the, in the, in the Bible, you have to rely on the unction of the Holy Spirit to help you with that. Okay. Uh, so when he says right here that, of course, we, by the way, we treat it and, and talk about it, can't contaminate it. How you use this is what's going to cause it to be good or bad. Okay. Now, some people can receive this and say, well, you know what, this is, this is, uh, this is good. Is it, are you saying that I can dress my children up in, in costumes and, and go trick-or-treating? What I am saying is that if you have sit, if you've already sat down and told your children about this, and you feel as though that it's okay for them to dress up as a superhero or a um, you know something that's not demonic, it's just their way of, of having make believe for one day. If that if it is okay with you, then you go ahead and and do that. Now, my boys. Like I said earlier, I teach them about this. They can probably talk to you about this subject just as well as I can because I've been training them in this every time. Having said that, they ask me, well, Dad, can I dress up as a as Superman, as Spider-Man, as uh, Iron Man, you know, all of these people. And I allow them to do that. Now, hear me out. I don't want to get any hate letters because I'm not going to waste my time reading them, so please don't waste your ink. I allow them to do that because I have already trained them in this. To them, I tell them how me and, me and my wife, we don't approve of it, but for their, their own sake, for them to pretend like they're Iron Man for a day or Spider-Man for a day, I allow them to wear the costume. We don't go trick-or-treating. That's just my personal thing. I don't, I don't trust everybody. But we do buy candy for them. Probably enough. Not, not a whole pillowcase full of candy. I don't go overboard. But just enough that it'll last maybe a couple of days. And we, we'll, we'll watch movies and eat popcorn and, and, and eat candy. Yeah, and I eat the candy too. I don't dress up. But I let them jump around and let them play. Because they're, they're, they're small kids. And it's just they watch these superhero movies and they pretend. I mean... Think about it. Your your children, or, or someone who you know, they probably run around the house pretending like they're a superhero without the costume all year long. This is just one time where they just get to dress up as it, as the person. But all of the other things, the, the trick or treating, all of the ghosts and goblins, and all of this, no, we leave that outside because each year I teach them this particular uh, teaching that I'm teaching you right now. And that's what goes on in my house. I can't speak for your house, but I'm telling you what's going on in the Shakir household. I train my boys on this because I have realized God has already put in my heart that if you you, you got to allow them to uh, learn and, and experience some of the stuff. Otherwise, if you just keep, keep them bottled up all the time, they may get out there and get wild. So I would rather to educate my boys on this let them play around and be the little superheroes and let them, you know, grow out of that stage. But as they get older, they won't have this curiosity of, you know, my parents didn't let me do anything. I can't wait till I get out of this house because I'm going to get bumped wild. And that's how, sadly, most children uh, do. Now, uh, of course, like I said again, I want to reiterate, I don't allow my boys to dress up in all these demonic things. I just kind of help the, let them just do the little superheroes and watch TV and, and eat the candy. And that is probably the extent of what we do of it. But one thing's for sure is they know about this particular subject, which is what you as the parent should be able to train your child into. Okay? I got one more portion of this teaching that I want to share with you, and then we're going to go ahead and, and close out for today. This is just my counsel when it comes to the subject of Halloween. 
Three points. Number one, inform your children about Halloween. Inform them on the subject so they can be aware of what this means and what to expect and so on. Number two, follow the leadership and the convictions of the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Ghost go off and say, no, don't do this, they're not ready. Don't you, don't put a costume on it. If you have found the balance, if you have trained them, or if you have allowed them to even perhaps view this video, then make sure you do your part of training them. And finally, number three is, as a parent, make the necessary decisions and adjustments to protect your children from the demonic activity. There are forces out there that are trying to get your children. And so you as a parent, or the guardian, I, I think that's the most proper way to call a parent, is a guardian. You have to guard your children. You have to make sure that nothing comes in to them that was going to uh, affect their future in a negative way. So you have to guard your children from these demonic forces because Satan is trying to get children. He is trying to get his hands on the next generation so they can all grow up with this anti-Christ mentality and not have anything to do with God. You, as the parent, guard your children, guard your life, watch your life, watch your ministry, because Satan is looking who he can devour. He can't devour everybody, but he's looking who he can devour. Okay? And so these are some of the truths about Halloween that I just wanted you to kind of just take in, inside and, and train your family. Or perhaps it's something that you can kind of uh, refer back to each year when it comes to Halloween. Just so you can kind of, uh, you know, get a little bit more, um, you know, detailed in, in, when it comes to the subject. And I encourage you to do some more studying on your own when it comes to this. Because these are just kind of some of the broad strokes. But um, you as the parent, you as, as, as the child or whoever you are that are that's listening to this broadcast, you have to know what, what kind of things are trying to come in your house. And you have to know what kind of things are trying to affect the next generation. And it's your job to look at this and then make the, the, the right decision possible, okay? Um, share this with somebody who, who's probably struggling in this area, who don't, who have all of these questions about this. This is something that I believe every parent needs to know about Halloween. And it's just the truth about Halloween. It's the truth about, you know, what God says about it, is your role as a parent, and the history behind this. And so... I encourage you to kind of share this with somebody else who you know needs to hear it. And I want to thank you again for tuning into this broadcast. And I hope to see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Upon the Rock broadcast. If this message has been a blessing, you can help us spread the gospel by sharing this message with your friends. Also, if you're online, please be sure to contact me, either through our website at ShakirMinistries.org or through social media. I would love to hear from you. Together, we can build a godly foundation in the lives of people. Until next time, please know that I'm praying for you, and I hope to see you on our next broadcast.